All right, I'm using my phone for the first time in a long time to make a video. These are the things that I want to talk about. And you know, we're talking about mushrooms here. You already know from the title. When you're processing trauma or information or you know, going through whatever practice you go through, it can just be so personal that it's more of a pain in the ass to come back and talk about it. And it's really difficult like at the time. <sighs> These are the kind of things that I do want to share because I share them with other friends of mine and they find it helpful. And I do too, like just having these conversations with people. So why not talk to everybody? Just a little backstory for a moment. I have been dealing with intense back pain for a long time. Um, I've had several car wrecks and injuries. And then in 2016, I fell in a sewer, which is a crazy story. So every so often I have this intense back pain. I have to call somebody to come over and massage me had that happen yesterday called a mobile massage emergency person had them come over and they did and they worked on my low back and my psoas the muscle that like you know runs around your crotchal area in your back he worked with me for an hour and a half it was probably the most painful massage i've ever had and after he was done i was like hmm i feel like i'm gonna have an emotional reaction from this i've had this back pain for so long that i have thought like there's probably something emotional connected to this I, the past couple weeks and the retrograde have just been hell my car that i just got three months ago the engine seized up doesn't exist anymore just money issues health issues back issues just a lot of other personal things going on i was like you know what i need to eat some mushrooms i need to take a trip now backstory on that is i'm 38 i've been using psychedelics since i was 15. i used to do it at raves and you know partying with other people and it was awesome and so much fun and super connecting but in my recent years it is a sacred ceremonial thing and i am kind of working through pockets of depression or anxiety or whatever i got going on um, and I attribute a lot of things to psychedelics. Like it helped me quit smoking cigarettes, quit drinking. I mean, I don't, I mean, I drink if I want to sometimes, but I barely want to. I don't, I mean, I eat healthy food and just has deepened my experience so much. I mean, I, yeah, I love psychedelics. So I was like, you know what? It is, it's time to take a little trip and see what's in there. And so I started. I decided to have four grams, which is not a bunch, but enough that I know I'm going to have an experience. So, okay. I'm trying to like move around, have some different sizes. There's my pyramid right there. Two or three hours into it, I was like, ah, I wish I would have taken more. Like, a, I know my levels and I could have gone for more. You know, I'm not taking these to party and I don't like to waste time. Like, there's going to be something that's going to happen from this. So I was like, well, let me just ride this out. Okay. So I decided that, you know what? I am going to work with the mushrooms here because I do believe in we are creating our re own reality and, you know, symbiotic relationship with the plant. So let me go stir up some emotions and see what I can get to come out. I decided to go watch some videos that always produce some emotions for me, mostly songs. And man, I tell you what, I was sitting there watching some street performances and some like Kundalini yoga stuff. And all of a sudden I went, <gasps> it was like this fucking like, I don't even know, it was so intense, like a jolt of like energy and emotional pain shot up through my whole body. And all of a sudden tears flew out of my eyes. Now I know I was tripping, but I've had this happen before when I have taken myself there. And literally the tears, it was so weird, like I was fluttering my eyes and they were flying and hit, like, hit me on the leg. It was, it was definitely a release and it was painful. And you know, when you're crying like that, it is re it's releasing a grief and you know it's gonna feel good. But man, I swear it went on for like two or three hours. So after like the first hour, I mean, I, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I, my nasal passages were so inflamed, I couldn't breathe. I was crying so much. I was so thirsty. My muscles were seizing up. And then I remembered I just had the most intense massage of my life. And that releases like lactic acid and all these things. And so I kept peeing because I drank a bunch of water earlier to move it through me. And it was like, I was like dehydrated and all the moisture was coming out and I'm in the fucking desert. And it was just so intense. And so I like got to the point where I was like trying to walk and having all this pain. And I, well, I'm talking like when you, when you get your psoas work on, it goes inside your hips and it is, it feels like they're pulling out an alien baby and it fucking hurt up. And I was walking like around the corner and got to 
a wall like this. I couldn't walk anymore and I just held on to the wall. My whole body was crying and I just started to feel this feeling of mourning and I started mourning all the children that I would never have in this lifetime. I had no idea that that was coming up. My boyfriend and I, uh, we both had, you know, had that talk and we're in a committed relationship and we don't want children, but we both are very childlike ourselves. You know, I've been fine with that decision. I, I did not know that that was gonna come up. I mean, I don't know how long I was in the hallway just holding on to the wall, but it was like, it was so painful. It was like this ancestral feminine mother womb thing. And it's funny because I have seen, I have been to several psychics and intuitive people and had very close friends that are intuitive workers over the years tell me that there are children like souls that would like to come through me for their for this lifetime and you know i have felt that i have had that feeling and it is something like i got chills right now like i love kids so much i love them i used to volunteer i've done the big sister thing like in high school and in college and when i meet kids they just like i don't know i've been called the pied piper they just like know like i'm one of them so anyway i was you know on the wall and just feeling this like ancestral feeling and it was like and I had this realization that I'm also dealing with root chakra things and so your root chakra you know is down here where your sex organs are and let me get my seat here why is this so close to my face just to be straight up I have had three hashtag me too incidences in my lifetime probably even more than that but just ones that I consider I guess like important enough to say something about i have dealt with sexual issues and inadequacies and just getting in my head and in fear around sex and there's there's a lot to unpack there so back issues sex issues womb mother nurturing issues all of this is something in you know in your low back psoas region and the psoas which i got worked on is sometimes called the soul muscle and i mean there there are so many articles on it people talk about like trauma that you store in your body and think about it one of my injuries that i had with my back falling in the sewer it was fucking traumatizing like emotionally not only like being in a sewer and like having to be pulled out but just like i lost my job i mean it was one thing after the other and just going in this into this depression when you have that kind of emotional stuff in your head i don't know how to explain it because i'm not a scientist i have listened to enough stuff but it's just like when you when you think stressful thoughts in your head and they will make your you know make your hair fall out or give you autoimmune stuff or make you have a heart attack like your thoughts connected with emotions these chemical things that happen in your body produce weird shit around your body so it makes sense that i felt you know i got that injury and i was having such an emotional like intense time that that also got embedded to that injury and then the thing like people who have trauma and it'll come out in therapy or meditation or psychedelic use sometimes they won't even know like people that were abused or molested as a as a kid they don't have memories of that and as far as like the hashtag me too stuff i don't feel like it's messing me up but then again i don't even know because i didn't even know that that was sitting back in there and it was like i you know as all that stuff that he worked out that is not only releasing like uh lactic acid and stuff like that like it, there are chemical things that are related to emotions and memories that are stored in our body. Like, it's crazy. So my ancestral feeling of needing to birth something as a woman, like needing to birth something, that pain, it makes me feel like I'm gonna cry right now, came up so intense. Mm. Ugh, I don't wanna cry because I already cried so much and I'm dehydrated. I love children. I always want to be around my sisters who have kids or my best friends who have kids. Of course, I refuse to move back to the Southeast because I fucking hate humidity and I love mountains. You're able to look at these things and I'm like, okay, like I brought that up and, and it got so intense that I had to take myself out of that. And so I had to like turn on something funny um, and watch something on TV to like, to be able to catch my breath and let like my nose was so inflamed. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't drink. I, I kept peeing. I was like moving all this lactic acid out for that. I mean, I was just a fucking mess. Um, so I finally 
watch something funny to calm down. And then I, you know, turned that off and was just thinking like, okay, like, you know, I'm not trained. I am not like trained in knowing how to move work, but I've been doing it for so many years that I, I, I know a few things. And I know like to how to pull up my emotions and then how to look at them and then how to self self soothe. And one of the things that might sound kind of cheesy is like, like I have learned how to give myself hugs to where it feels amazing like it feels like someone is hugging me it feels it just it feels super supportive and so i gave myself some really big hugs and i was like hey you are you are worthy you are a nurturer and whether you have earthly children here or not you are a mother of sorts and i've always felt that like like mother earth and i've always been that way with every relationship I want to nurture and, and help people and be there for them and, and be compassionate. And that's what my mother was for me. And I know I'm very lucky everybody doesn't have that. But, you know, even when I see mothers in the grocery stores, I just have this like reverence for them. I don't know. I, 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 I get emotional like that. And I, I guess I was allowing myself to feel that reverence for myself. Like, you know, I am a nurturer. And like, there are things in society as a woman, they tell you that if you did not procreate, like, what is your life worth? You worth you become a old bag or old hag, or like people want to have children for their legacy. And I know even my mother, mom, I love you, ha told me two days ago, like, don't you want to have children? I'm scared you're gonna have an unfulfilled life. And she said that to me many times, and I have thought about that. But you know, that is something that I cannot take outside opinions. It is something defined within myself. And so the work with the psychedelics, which is just so beautiful, is that, you know, I showed myself self-love and it's like, I believe that we are all one. There is one vibration running through everything and I am experiencing that. And that the, this child or children do not have to come through me. I feel like that is my ego speaking, but that we are all one. And I would love to get back into volunteering just to be able to be a positive role model for children wherever I am. Putting attention on it and putting love on it. So yeah, I wanted to share about it last night after the experience, but I look like I had been beaten in the face because I had been crying for so long and it was just such an intense experience. But I wanted to share it because, well, one thing, just be, you know, being a woman who's decided to not have children and what, what this means to me, but also just talk about psychedelics because they're fucking amazing and you know, I was supposed to be in school right now getting my master's in psychology to be on my way to becoming a psychedelic therapist. And I had some life changes that happened in the past few months that has either stopped or halted that. I'm not sure which, but like I said, I've been doing them since I was 15. They are wonderful and amazing. You know, they're not as taboo as they used to be. Granted, I've been living in like, you know, Denver where they're decriminalized and more and more studies are showing how they open different parts of your brain. You can perceive more colors and emotions and express things and just pull back from your day-to-day -day stresses. And that's part of the reason why I do it, just to hone in on what's important. Like stop worrying about this or, you know, social media or like this money or I need this thing. But it's just like, hey, wait, why am I here? For me, it's to feel good for as long as possible. And what that means is taking care of my body, body, mind, and soul, but definitely this physical vessel <clears throat> and to have as much fun as possible. And there you go. And be good to people. And that's the most important thing. Um, so yeah, I just had a beautiful experience. You never know what's going to come up. And that is another thing that I just want to say is be open to new experiences because we can be so closed minded. And if you keep doing the same things all the time, you're going to get the same results and you're not going to have growth because you're going to stay in comfort. And I hate, I'm sorry, I'm pointing, I'm pointing at you and I'm pointing at me. All I know is we, we all have a limited perspective and perception because we've been in this thing, but I'm getting chills right now because I know this is true that there are, you can say the universe has so many more surprises or people have so many more and experiences have things to teach you that you just don't know. So you gotta be willing to do things. I'm not saying do psychedelics, I'm saying like be brave in like, you know, work, love, career, you know, a, a secret passion that you want to do, whatever it is, is just be willing to keep growing because why the fuck not? <laughs> why the fuck not? Why? Life is a bloop, just a bloop over in a minute. So anyway, I got a wedgie. <sighs> That's my vlog. I just want to start talking about more real experiences and, um, you know, it's, it's part of my process. I, 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 I'm going to tell you this story another time. I had throat issues for about eight or nine years and it was because 
I would silence myself and that is all, it's all connected to so many things. It's so much fun, but I'm just going to keep challenging myself, challenging myself, challenging myself to talk right and to let things flow and just continually say, fuck it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching me. I appreciate you. All right. You're having a great day. You're having a great day.